Our top focus this evening, the Prime Minister's southern push. In his third trip to a southern state in just over a fortnight since the start of 2024, the Prime Minister has a series of programmes scheduled in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over the next two days. After inaugurating a state-of-the-art Boeing facility in Bengaluru, the Prime Minister will also inaugurate Kelo India Youth Games in Chennai tomorrow. He will also visit the Sri Rangan Temple in Trichy on Saturday. Remember, the Prime Minister started this year with a visit to Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Lakshadweep, followed it up with a visit to the Veerabhadra Temple in Andhra Pradesh, a roadshow in Kochi and a visit to the Guruvayur and Ramaswamy Temple in Trishur. All of it aimed at the Prime Minister and the BJP southern push in the run-up to 2024. The realities, remember, in each of the southern states is uniquely different. Remember, apart from Karnataka and Telangana, the BJP has not won a seat without an alliance in any of the other southern states. Can the Prime Minister's southern push change the party's southern realities? Look at the optics of southern attire. Uh, the image and the message going across, extremely strong. Noted cephologist Sandeep Shastri joins us this evening, along with uh, journalist and academic R.K. Radhakrishnan from Chennai. Senior journalist Pula Rao also joins us this evening and uh, I hope to be joined by political analyst P.K.D. Nambiar in a bit from now. R.K. Radhakrishnan, my first question to you. While the incremental numbers as far as the BJP is concerned may not seem extraordinary from the states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala or Andhra Pradesh even, is this entire push aimed at rewriting that narrative? Because the optics is one of an embrace of southern culture. And that's the optics that one has seen play out repeatedly. Is this more a symbolic battle to capture the final frontier? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you that that is the aim. But unfortunately, uh, the tools being uh, used, uh, I have uh, serious dis disagreements with. Because what works in the north will not work in the south. We know where what works in one geography with one population, with one kind of people, with one kind of tribes, will not certainly work with another kind of people, another kind of tribes, and another kind of uh, you know constituency. So that's what we see here. What we see is the prime minister uh, doing uh, you know exact same things that he does in say Ayodhya or in Kashmir or in uh, Delhi and other places, uh, going to visiting temples. Of course, uh, this is Suresh Gobi's wedding that is. Uh, Therefore, in Guruayur, for instance, and of course, coming to Tamil Nadu for uh, the Kelo India uh, Games uh, inauguration. Now, the problem with uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala is, is extremely clear. The people of Tamil Nadu and Kerala believe that they have been unfairly segregated and separated against uh, uh, funds when it comes to funds allocation. Everybody knows this because Tamil Nadu went through absolutely right. chaotic floods and uh, whatnot, uh, both in North Tamil Nadu and South Tamil Nadu. And Kerala is in a dire, dire financial situation. This is being debated uh, uh, virtually on a daily basis on television and uh, across uh, living rooms and whatnot. But the center is not allocating a single paisa more even for flood, flood relief or to uh, help with uh, Kerala's financial woes. But that is exactly where the problem lies. And the Prime Minister, instead of coming here and speaking in Tamil, uh, quoting Thiruvalluvar, going to El Murugan's house and participating in Pungal, if he has released some 500 or 1,000 crores, it would have made a, I'm telling you, a massive difference but with the people of Tamil Nadu. And that has not happened. That's one part of the argument, R.K. Radhakrishnan. The other part is actually the BJP trying to become relevant and perhaps significant in these states, giving it a national footprint overall. Sandeep Shastri, going forward into 2024, uh, would this perhaps be the defining test? Because it is sort of assumed that in the Hindi heartland, the presence and the challenge, uh, you know, the image of the prime minister is unchallengeable. Whereas when it comes to the southern states, how is it going to play out, especially let's say in states like Kerala, where in two or three states uh, seats, the BJP does have a sizable vote share, whether it will be able to convert that into tangible results would be looked out for. Veera, uh, if optics alone were to define reality, politics would be very different. But optics apart... I think the southern temple yatra started by the prime minister, which will go on for a few days, is an attempt to stretch the religious fervor that has been generated by the developments preceding 22nd January 
south of the Vindhyas. But Veera, as you know, this is a formidable mountain range. And the winds of religious fervor penetrating through that mountain range and coming to the south would not be something very easy. But then, as you know, and as my other colleagues on the panel know, the Prime Minister does not try things which are easy. He tries things which are tough. And he believes that this Yatra may be a way to help the BJP gain strength in the South. Uh, our surveys have clearly shown, Veera, that in the South, the Prime Minister is more visible than the party. The Prime Minister's own presence is much more than that of the party. And I think the hope is that, especially in states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Andhra, they are hoping for some impact, but I'm not too sure whether that impact will be there. Of course, they would argue, counter argue that they are looking at the long run. But immediately, I think in Karnataka and Telangana, they are hoping that this religious fervor would help them a bit. But uh, again, uh, I think the fervor in the North caused and its political implications is very, 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 very different from the South. Right. Important point that you make there. PKD Nambiar also joins us. Before I get to Pularao to discuss the other aspects of it, PKD Nambiar, just a short while ago, RK Radhakrishnan was making the point that while the optics are strong, while the embrace is strong, there are some substantial issues in terms of allocation of funds from the center. Given that there is a narrative of center versus state playing out, especially in states like Tamil Nadu and Kerala versus the New Delhi government, do you believe that the optics and the message of the prime minister and the prime minister's persona alone could perhaps tide over and transcend the divide that we call the north versus south divide? Uh, what what uh, Nambia, can the I, audio uh, needs to be muted. muted. Uh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. So I think uh, what we have seen in the last three weeks, forget about the past, in, in the three weeks, what we have seen in the south of India, the, the prime minister, the kind of welcome, what he was getting, whether it is in uh, twice in Kerala or in uh, Tamil Nadu or in Rachatyu. I think this says everything that he is the most prominent leader. It is not just a, any other prime minister. We had uh, earlier also the prime ministers were going to Guruvayu temple or for that matter in uh, many other places. But there is something to do with him uh, big, big, bigger than uh, a large persona wherein uh, whatever he touches, what, wherever he goes, that becomes a topic of discussion, at least not for one day or two days, at least for some time. That's the reason we are discussing it. I think uh, with, uh, talking about the North India and the South India divide, I think that the time has come for all of us to realize that I am a South Indian staying in Delhi. The same is in the so, so many other people in the other way around. So I think the divide south north divide has uh, even though some of the dravidian parties and communist parties have tried their level best but i think the bridge is com coming uh, uh, close to uh, the south and north divide is coming down oh. drastically and the kind of okay, uh, you are saying you are saying May I complete? You're saying that the, there is a bridge that's being built which is transcending the north-south divide. Uh, of course, 2024 will be a test of that. I'll get a final round of comments from the panels. But first to Mr. Pullarao, uh, in a state like Telangana where the BJP seems to have gained in the assembly election, and I have a specific question as far as that is concerned, it has gained at, some would say, at the cost of the BRS. Do you believe that there will be tacit understandings and alliances in a state like Telangana? And what about the question of Andhra Pradesh? That seems to be wide open and the presence of the BJP as a force in Andhra Pradesh seems to be as marginal as it is in a state like Tamil Nadu. If you take Telangana first, the BJP has grown, you know, from 7-8% to 15%. All over the south, just as in the rest of India, BJP, when it enters the state, it takes 20, 30 years for it to come to 30 percent, 40 percent. It did not come over in Karnataka in one election. From 1980, I think it took 25 years, 24 years to form a government by itself. 
బిఫోర్ సేమ్ థింగ్ అప్లైస్ అని తెలంగాణ కేరళ ఆంధ్ర అండ్ తమిళనాడు జస్ట్ యాజ్ ఇట్ అప్లైడ్ ఇన్ అదర్ పార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ద కంట్రీ ద భారతీయ జంసా సాంగ్ జంసా వాజ్ దేర్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీ టూ ఫిఫ్టీ త్రీ ఇన్ ఉత్తర్ ప్రదేశ్ ఫైనలీ వి ఫామ్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఫార్టీ ఇయర్స్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఉత్తర్ ప్రదేశ్ సో ఎస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇంక్రీజింగ్ అండ్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ యాజ్ ఫార్ ఆల్ ద ఆప్టిక్స్ ఆర్ కన్సర్న్ వన్ థింగ్ వీ హ్యావ్ నోటిస్ Narendra Narendra Modi, Amit Shah, Nadda, other leaders are going on to southern states, Telangana, Andhra, they are coming, they are coming, they are showing interest. People notice they are showing interest, people notice they are seeking their votes. This is a kind of, you know, it is a tantalizing situation for the people also. How to vote for him? But there are not enough votes to make him win. 4% in Tamil Nadu may go up to 8%, what's the use? He will still lose. They are... So the tantalizing situation is there in the southern states just as they, they want to vote for him as a personality. As a personality, his frequent visits to Telangana, Andhra and southern states has made a mark. He, he, I think he's liked, not, not at all, you know, people like him. They may want to vote right. for him, but they can't vote for a base. Our friend Mr. Radhakrishnan said, had he given 500 right. crores, 1,000 crores? I don't think it would impact that way. First of all, as you said, the party has to grow as much as Narendra Modi has grown. That's going to take time. It will take 20 years, 30 years for a new generation right. of voters to come. And Telangana may increase. As far as alliances, it is too early. A wounded BRS in Telangana, it has to do well in parliament elections. It has no option but to go alone. So there will be a severe triangular fight in oh. Telangana. As far as Andhra is no, concerned... Those are, those are compulsions be... of electoral politics categorically. What you are pointing out are compulsions of electoral politics categorically. But you are making one very important point which I want to take to R.K. Radhakrishnan. R.K., in a state like Tamil Nadu where a national party, whether it is the Congress or the BJP, has always played second fiddle to one of the two major Dravidian parties. This time you are seeing the BJP assert its identity. They have backed their regional leader despite the AIADMK blaming him for breaking the alliance. Is this then an effort categorically, maybe not looking at numbers, possibly looking at tacit understanding, but looking at establishing the party's identity? Because ultimately, even Kerala, they've got 30-28% vote shares in seats like Trishore. In Tamil Nadu, remains the final frontier. Yeah, uh, there is a slight problem uh, in this assumption, Veera. The problem ha happens to be that both the DMK and the ADMK have leadership issues. Uh, the DMK leadership, uh, Mr. Stalin, is not keeping too well. And you have uh, the ADMK where uh, EPS uh, Yadapadi Pallichami is as charming as a wooden spoon. So that is the space into which the BJP is coming in. And you have uh, everything uh, literally constructed for you. You have a charming leader who has uh, enthralled the masses in the north, ma masses in the east and other places of the country. So what you need is this additional factor wherein you put your, uh, you know, money where your mouth is, simple. You know, something like the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Madurai, for instance, it, not a single brick has been laid as, as on date, and that was the major campaign fine for the DMK in the 2021 elections. You would have remembered uh, the videos of Udayini right. holding a single brick and saying that, you know, this is a brick stolen from, this is the only brick that was there in uh, Ames, and I stole it. Yes, there have been admissions, but these all these admissions, uh, the students are studying in different medical colleges by run by the state government. So things like these, you know, they, this this will actually propel if you show some results on the ground. Apart from uh, your mandir mandir propaganda, definitely that is what will influence the people of Tamil Nadu. That okay. is what will influence the people of Kerala. And there is a leadership vacuum at all levels, both in Kerala and in Tamil Nadu. And this is where the BJP needs to capitalize in. I think there is a problem of advice to the Prime Minister. Sure. Right. So you're making a very strong point there. Sandeep Shastri, in terms of incrementals, obviously the Karnataka story has been very different for the BJP. Uh, you maxed out, some would say, in BJP maxed out, some would say, in Karnataka in 2019 with 25 seats. Uh, do you see the party holding it back, A, and B, vis-a-vis -vis the Karnataka experience compared to the other states in, in, in the south of India, how do you see the larger southern footprint for the BJP post-2024? Veera, if you look at uh, Karnataka, you are right in saying that the BJP, in a sense, peaked in 2019, getting 25 of the 28 seats. This time around, they may even not contest 25 of the 28 seats. 
because they will have to concede at least three seats to the ally. So the number of seats they contest is going to be less than the now is going to be the same as the number of seats that they won last time in all probability. And this is a concession they are making in Karnataka in order to defeat the Congress. So this is uh, one step back for them in Karnataka, also keeping in mind the divisions which are there in the state unit of the party. I would agree with what my co-panelists have been saying, that when it comes to Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Andhra, the BJP has a long-term plan. They do not want to play second fiddle. They want to lead their alliance. And that they realize cannot happen over one election, but would happen over a period of time. And I think they are willing to okay. sit up and allow that to happen. There is a long-term strategy. There is a 2024 strategy. As television debates, we will focus on 2024. Last word to you, PKD Nambiar. Clearly, categorically, is it purely about numbers or is it about changing the southern narrative? Because the numbers still seem to be difficult, but in terms of changing the southern narrative would be crucial. That may not be really true. The reason being, for an example, Kerala, because since others have covered the other states, Kerala, for an example, BJP has got a clear plan A and plan, plan B in place. They are talking about the there are six seats which are uh, either they have come uh, in the second uh, fiddle in the last uh, election or otherwise uh, a number third with a very small uh, difference of margin. So if these six seats are they are focusing okay. and if they are able to get two seats uh, like for an example we know that the Shashi Tharoor the Trivandrum seat which was always okay. been uh, the second was always BJP. Patanam Tita Trishur for uh, uh, the Prime All Minister right. had to, uh, twice in the last two weeks. So these are the places where they have a focused approach. All right. And 16 percentage was the last time the, the vote right. saying was a seat. So I think let's not uh, Sorry. Uh, think of, uh, uh, please go on. Important point that you make there, PKD Nambia. Yes, there are specific seats. There is seat-specific strategy. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll keep a close watch of how this pans out as we head into 2024. But from that big political exchange down south uh, now to the big NDTV exclusive coming in from Davos, my colleague Vishnu Spom spoke with RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das, who seemed confident and spoke out about how India has emerged from the geopolitical tensions and much, much more. Let's listen in to the excerpts. One of the most important announcements which have been made over the last couple of days at the World Economic Forum and on the sidelines here in Davos, Switzerland, is the India growth story. There's nobody better placed to talk about growth in India than the RBI governor. Uh, Mr. Shakti Kanta Das joins us now. Thanks so very much uh, for being with us. Sir, seven percent. Uh, extremely optimistic. Um, it is in line, of course, with what some of the global projections are. What are some of the sectors driving this growth? Uh, you are talking of current year or yeah, next 24, year? 24, 25. Okay. Now let me also, you know, uh, sure. mention, start by saying that uh, India has recovered from the recent uh, volatilities and the uncertainties and uh, the challenges, this multiple turmoil one after the other, health crisis followed by, you know, all these geopolitical crises. So India has emerged out mm -hmm. of it a lot better. Our macroeconomic stability is far better mm -hmm. than most other countries. Uh, financial stability is also we are you know the our financial sector is also doing well and uh, the seven percent growth in the current year when we said it uh, for current year it looked optimistic but as you know the national statistical office has given a number of 7.3 percent now talking of 24 25 uh, I made a uh, you know I made a uh, statement uh, yes. in some other forum yesterday that uh, we expect uh, you know uh, I have a sense that the economy will touch a real GDP growth of seven percent next mm -hmm. year, and I said this on the basis of the overall macroeconomic conditions prevailing in the country. You see, all economic activities, the momentum of economic activities are remaining very positive. And we have reasons to believe that this positivity, this momentum will be maintained well into next year and beyond. I have made a statement also that India has now entered into a period of uh, growth long haul. Yes. And uh, economic activities are holding, you know, holding, on, holding their ground. Momentum of economic activity is maintained. Aggregate demand conditions are remaining positive. Investment activity has started picking up, backed by, you know, continued high capital expenditure by the government. Private sector capex is also picking up 
and agriculture sector in the current year and also expected to do better in the next year so with all these confluence of factors and with lot of activity also happening in uh, with regard to investment in the new age technologies like fintech in uh, startups and technology based uh, uh, activities that gave us the, gives us the confidence to say that next year the growth uh, should be touching uh, would be touching about uh, 7% so inflation at what 4.5% uh, that is what you are projecting next year average is 4.5% you see immediately after the ukraine war mm -hmm. our headline inflation had touched 7.8% mm -hmm. now thereafter because of uh, the monetary policy actions mm -hmm. which we have taken which was also supplemented by aided by uh, the supply side measures taken by the government inflation has been steadily coming down and we are on our way to achieve reach 4% uh, target but next year's average is expected to be 4.5% the positive aspect of it is that we are our inflation is now well within the you know the target band of inflation but we are not satisfied with that we would like our inflation to reach 4% and remain around 4% what and, yes, uh, just let me complete that bit so therefore that is our endeavor and uh, the core inflation there also the core inflation has now come below you know marginally below the 4% uh, headline target so we expect next year's average inflation to be 4.5 inflation to steadily moderate towards uh, 4% uh, sir so uh, what of uh, the areas of concern now presently the red sea scenario there are attacks which are taking place india's maritime supply lines are through those waters to a large extent uh, is this an area of potential concern you see there are lots of uh, you know global uncertainties you just mentioned some of them these are new flash points in uh, uh, global uh, you know geopolitics and uh, as we stand today india is quite well placed to deal with these challenges how these you know red sea area conflicts and how the movement of ships etc ships etc are going to pan out are things which have to be watched and uh, monitored and i think there uh, uh, various national governments including india are doing their best to see that the movement of our ships or ships coming yes. towards india and all are not uh, disrupted and a final question sir the last couple of days have seen lots of interesting conversations for example on artificial intelligence also the overall state of the world economy india remains a clear outlier you see at the general systemic level there is lot of interest around india india is outlier in the sense that uh, rest of the world has not is not witnessing contraction rest of the world has escaped the earlier apprehensions of uh, a hard landing but nonetheless global global growth and individual country growths have slowed down in the middle of all this india is recording 7 point uh, you know 7% plus growth inflation also most of the countries as in india have moderated but every country including india we are yet to reach our target levels that is a you know that is an area which receives our continued uh, uh, focus and uh, in this i would like to mention two points where there is lot of interest shown by you know i have my interaction with uh, uh, people from other countries it shows there is lot of interest about uh, how the fintechs how the technology sector how the startups are doing in india there are lot of questions about uh, the reserve banks so, you know central bank digital currency which we have launched the e rupee now which is based on blockchain technology and what has been our experience how we see this uh, you know what is the potential of it how we are going about it there is a lot of interest around the cbdc of uh, the reserve bank of india there is lot of interest about uh, upi countries are asking questions they would like to have it in their countries so in the area of technology in fintech in uh, payment systems there is lot of interest and these are areas where conventionally you know questions uh, you know there was not so much interest on india but this time around i find that there's lot of interest on these areas indeed so thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us the rbi governor talking to us telling us among other things where india's gdp growth is projected to be for 24 25 the inflation numbers much better now things are coming out of the covid situation we saw but also a great deal of interest over here in davos switzerland